Hello again, good afternoon to you. Welcome to Business. Economist and Head of Finance at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Godfred Bokwin, is calling on government to rationalize some tax exemptions to help rake in revenues for capital investments. Speaking on the sidelines of the Ghana Integrity Business Forum, organized by the Ghana Integrity Initiative in Accra, he maintained the introduction of some reforms in the country's public sector would strengthen confidence in the economy. He has also been, he's also been speaking about the need to ensure physical discipline. No point in undermining the fundamentals through the, uh, the, 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 the kind of if indiscipline that we tend to accommodate of budget expenditures and all of because sometimes those excesses do not go to the productive sectors of the economy. And then once we are done with the election, the inflationary expectations from there can no longer be unexpected. I heard you speak briefly about decoupling development from elections. Yes, so yes, because we the election has gotten too much into our heads, into everything that we do, that sometimes we tend to delay development and, 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 and push it so closer to the election because seeing is believing and all of that. We have to be because our democracy should mature by now, such that if you are in government and, and something has to be done in year one, there's no point in saying let's wait and do it in year three or year four. Because the point is that we need all these things to ease the restrictions on the growth drivers of the private sector. Because when Ghana grows and Ghana develops and it benefits all of us, it's for all of us. Professor Buckling has also been warning government against overspending during the election year. We have to do, especially at the macro level, to ensure that when we talk about enabling environment, that will guarantee private sector leadership as engine of growth and employment creation. We actually back it with practical meaning. And more importantly, because the call is on government to, to increase its capital spending. Of course, we understand the difficulties, but there's still there's a lot of room for government to collect a lot more tax revenue that they can use to embark upon this. And we've talked about tax exemptions that quickly we have to be able to rationalize and make some savings that we can actually channel into investment, especially capital investment, because a certain threshold level investment is needed by the public sector in order to even guarantee private sector innovativeness. And it's very, very important. Then there's the need for some level of productivity enhancing reforms at the, at the public sector in, institutions like customs and the rest of them. Because that inefficiency represents cost to the private sector in their interaction with public sector say, service delivery um, handles. And that has to be worked on. Then we're also saying that, of course, it's a budget. There's still a lot that we have to do in translating it into actual. But once we do that, let's be mindful of next year. Because next year is unique because it's an election year. And, 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 and our own history is not supported because of the level of physical indiscipline that comes with the usual political business cycle. So the call on government is to actually use next year to show love to the private sector by keeping to fiscal discipline. And that's business for now. There'll be more business shortly on the marketplace. Back to 